Hi, Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this film in which I'll show you how to best use those last 10 minutes of each paper, that time you have to check, in order to bump up your marks by as many marks as possible, and perhaps even move you up from one grade to the next. Now, how are you going to do this? The answer is that you're going to follow my system for checking your paper, because by careful, methodical, and effective checking, you can gain more marks than you would think and very likely move you up from one grade to the next. The crux of the matter is that what I want you to do is rather than checking each question once and looking for several different things, I'm going to show you how to check your entire paper several times, but each time you'll be looking for only one aspect. The secret is to use Dara's Law or Dara's ticks. And I'm going to show you how that works right now. So here I am in the exam hall and I've just finished the paper. Now, the first check that I do is the D from the word Dara and it's a D for done. Have I done every question? Now I know this sounds foolish, but very often candidates manage to miss out a question. Often they've turned over two pages at once and the favourite one to miss out is the back question. So, what you need to do is you need to have a look at the question paper at the top. It tells you that there are 22 questions. So I'm going to check that I've answered all 22 questions. And each time I'm going to tick to say I have. So question one, question two, question three. I know this sounds foolish. Question four, question five. But somebody, question six, question seven, Question seven still. Somebody in your exam room, question eight, question nine, will miss out a question. Question 10, question 11. And you'll all come out of the exam hall. Question 12, question 13, question 14. And somebody will say, how do you get on with the probability question? And you'll say, what probability question? Question 15 question 16, question 17. Now look at that. There's a double page. I've obviously turned over two pages at once when I was doing the paper and I've missed out that double page. So what I would do, of course, is to do those questions. Let's assume I've done them now. But by the way, a double page missed out is eight marks in this case. Well, that's a grade pretty well missed out on this paper. Question 18, question 19. Let's tick them as if to say, yes, I've done them. Question 20, question 21. And there you have it, I've finished. No, because there were 22 questions, weren't there? And what I've done unwittingly is I've gone from question 21 and I've turned over straight to the back of the paper and I've missed out question 22. Six marks. So... It's very easy to miss that bottom question. So what you're going to do to do your D for Dara check, to check you've done every question, is you're going to look and see how many questions there are and then tick off each one. And that is the D for Dara. And that is the first of four checks. And how long did it take me? In fact, about two minutes. And it may be that you've missed out a double page or that you've done what I did and you've managed to turn over from the penultimate question all the way and thought you'd finished. Whereas in fact, of course, I hadn't. So that's the D for Dara. Next comes the A. Right, so we have done the D for Dara. We have checked that we've actually done every question. Now, D, A. The A is have we answered every question? Let me show you what I mean. Now, in question 1c here, the question says, does the point with coordinates 100, comma, minus 302 line on, lie on the line? You must give a reason for your answer. I've substituted x is 100 in, and I've found that when x is 100, y is minus 298, not minus 302. But have I answered the question? The question is, does the point lie on the line? So the answer must be a yes or a no. So I need to have said no, and preferably, no, the point does not lie on the line. Now, this might be okay for my reason, especially as it's only worth one mark, but if it were worth any more, 
then I would explain in words that when x is 100, y is minus 298 and not minus 302. So there's an example of where I would have scored 0 out of 1 because I did not answer the question. And the question required a yes or a no. So I would look at each of these and I'd say, have I answered the question? Work out the value of x. Yes, I've worked out the value of x. Good. Let's have a look here at number four. Right, especially of the 40 babies, one of the 40 babies is going to be chosen at random. Find the probability that this baby has a weight of more than five kilograms. And I've written three. That's not the probability that the baby has a weight of more than five kilograms. That's how many babies have a weight of five kilograms or more. I need to say three out of 40. So again, I failed to answer the question. By the way, I should have said, as you're doing this, each time, tick, 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 tick to show you know that you have actually answered the question. So you're checking each one. Right. So keep on ticking down to say, yes, I've checked each question and I know I have answered it. Now, obviously, I've set this one up, so I know where the next question is I haven't answered. Okay, and it's coming up very soon. It's going to be here in question 13. I'm asked to work out the volume of the cube. And what have I done here? I've worked out the width, W, and I've given the answer as 20, which is what W is. And the question here is work out the volume. So I would realize now that I had to complete that question. So you must make sure that you check each and every question for the A in Dara to check that you have actually answered the question. Right, that's the second check. You check each question once to check you've done it, each question again to check you've answered the question, and now we're moving on to the R of Dara, which is to check that your answers are reasonable. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so again, each time I'm going to check it's reasonable, why not put a tick at the bottom as you check it to make very sure. Does that look like it should be about seven? You check that each one is reasonable. Now, in question 4b here, I've been work asked to work out an estimate for the mean weight of the 40 babies, and I've got an answer of 28 kilograms. Well, none of the babies weighs anything like 28 kilograms. That answer is not reasonable. So I'll need to sort that out and figure out my mistake. In fact, my mistake is that I divided by 5, and I should have been dividing by the number of babies, which is 40. But I will only spot that I've made the error if I'm looking to see that my answer is reasonable each time. Does that look reasonable? Give it a tick if it does. Do we think x is going to be about 50? Well, probably with an angle of 63 there. But give it a check, tick each question. Go through and check that each question looks reasonable. Now, here's a common mistake. On 14b, I've asked... I'm asked to work out the length of this diagonal here. So I've drawn the triangle, and I've worked out the length of the diagonal here using the cosine rule, and I've got the answer 378. Well, if I was looking for the reasonableness of the answer, I'd think, wait a minute, that can't be almost 400. This side's only 14, and this side's only 9. And then with luck, I would realise that I've failed to square root my 378. That 378, that's what a squared equals not the length of the side, e.g. I need to square root to get that. So there you are. I'd have found another mark and rescued another mark for that question. So go through your paper, tick off each question, make sure that each answer is reasonable. And when you've checked each and every answer, then you only have one more check to do. The A at the end of Dara a, for have you given your answer to the correct degree of accuracy? So, we simply make our way through looking for any questions that ask for a certain degree of accuracy. I'm not looking for anything else. 
I'm just looking for any question which says anything to do, look at this, three significant figures. Let's underline that. Here's the answer on my calculator. Have I given it to three significant figures? No, I haven't. Tick it off. Right. So go all the way through. One decimal place, have I done that? Yes, I have. Give it to one decimal place. Check that you have. The volume of the cube, three significant figures. Have I given it to three significant figures? Yes, I have. Three significant figures. Well, I haven't worked out the square root there, so you'd need to check that one because we've already worked out there was a mistake with that one. Three significant figures? Yes. Two decimal places? Yes. Okay, imagine losing marks for not rounding properly. This is the double sheet I missed out before. Okay, so very important. Now, how long did that take me to check through the whole paper to see that I don't lose any marks for not writing my answers to the correct degree of accuracy? So there you have it. The DARA law, DARA's law, or DARA's ticks. However you choose to remember it, remember to check through the paper once to check that you've done each question. Check through the paper a second time Checking that you have answered each question. If it asks for an area, have you given an area? If it asks for a probability, have you given a probability? Check that each answer is reasonable. Or does the answer look too large or too small or not feasible? And lastly, check each question. If there's a required degree of accuracy, make sure you've given your answers to that degree of accuracy. There you are, the four-way check, Dara's law, Dara's ticks. Let's make sure you squeeze every mark out of your paper that you possibly can. Thanks for watching. See you in the next film.